Now from healthcare, financial services, disabilities and discrimination as well as cybersecurity, the cost of non-compliance goes beyond a fine. Now business support services decline, loss of revenue and loss of credibility all play significant factors in non-compliance. But to speak about this in further detail, I'm joined live from the US by Josh Jackson, who is Six Clicks Head of Markets and Growth in America. Welcome to you. Hi. Hello, Holly. How are you? Can you really hear me good. okay? I can. Great to have your company again. Nice to see you. Um, now, let's talk a bit yeah. about this. I guess, what are the effects uh, from regulatory bodies on non-compliance? And can you just give a bit of an overview about what non-compliance is? Yeah. Um, so thanks again for having me. It's always good, mm -hmm. to, good to see you and be with you, um, Holly. Um, in terms of, of non-compliance, you know, there's these competing factors between compliance and, and non-compliance. And I think a lot of times, um, I, I'm, I'm using the analogy these days of driving your car, right? You, you, if your accelerator working, um, then you make immediate decision to, um, get that fixed, right? If your car can't move, then, um, there's some there's some issues there. If your brakes aren't working um, or they're on the verge of not, of not working, then um, sometimes we, we don't think about it because it's not an immediate impact, right? It's you might hear it, you might not, you might be distracted. Um, and so you, you leave it off to the side. And in terms of, and I see that from compliance and non-compliance where it's not, your normal function of business when you're thinking about these compliance issues, these regulatory bodies saying, hey, this is what you need to be consulted. So put some time and energy to it. Um, but it doesn't keep the car running, right? Um, mm. And at the last second, right? And now you aren't compliant and you didn't check your brakes. Now you have all these other issues. You might get in a car accident you hurt someone, um, you, you start stalling the ability to continue moving that car forward. Um, so you're not only in, in fault um, to, to the, the regulator saying, hey, make sure your, your, your brakes are working, uh, but now you you're, have lost a lot of trust to your customers, uh, those that are in the car with you, um that's are like why didn't you get your brakes checked why haven't you done this mm. um and so it's it's a cascading effect that happens and a lot of times it just happens way too, way too late exactly it's when we're not making it a priority and then it has all these flow-on effects um afterwards which can cost a whole lot more than the first problem to begin with i loved that analogy that you just gave um so what resources i guess are available for increasing compliance when it comes to these regulatory bodies yeah and um i think what we've done um at six clicks but the industry is really pushing towards the this automation um, how do we, since there are so many different uh, regulations that come out, and th that's really a, uh, a compilation of the industry saying, in order to be compliant, in this case, if we talk about cybersecurity, in order to be compliant, we need to put in all these controls. We need continuous monitoring. We have standard bodies that are putting out these standards to say, if you follow these, you're less likely to have a cyber event occur. And so um, the technology is growing, artificial intelligence, which we're using, um, which has been great. And other companies are starting to jump on using artificial intelligence and the people around uh, automation to really get ahead of the game. And it really lowers the cost through these tools. Um, it's just implementing them. It's making mm. that change to go, hey, we're going to really think about the laws, but we're also going to use tools that, that help us do that. And one of those tools would be an automated system um, and an, a platform to keep everything in, in line. 
Yeah, so would you say, I guess, that automation uh, is one of the main challenges then that companies are facing when they want to be compliant? Like they might want to be compliant, but it's not as easy as just putting it all into place. You do need those automated processes already. Yeah, uh, well, I don't know if you need the automated processes already, but I think, you, you know, we're, we're creatures of habit, right? And so making some of these changes and your process in which you do things daily um, takes a little bit of time. And I think there's, there's a little bit of uh, faith in going, oh, the computer is going to be able to do this for me. And um, so there's, there's that piece of, of, of changing your habits from the old process that takes time, but there's a lot of imperfections in it um, and start putting in tools and looking for new solutions to to solve some of these issues. Um, and the one reason why I bring this up is we've had so many hacks. The last time I was on here, so many different hacks have occurred and they continue to go up and they have these ramifications that are large. So here in the US, the Colonial Pipeline hack just yes. occurred and now people are struggling to get gas, right? And it's these old processes of saying, well, we've done it like this for so long. How about we just keep doing it? And um, the industry is really starting to get behind the fact that, okay, maybe it's not working like it used to because we're seeing such large, massive uh, hacks occur. So are you saying because I guess in this digital world we're developing so rapidly so that the businesses need to be developing with that technology as well? Correct. The businesses have, if they're not automating right now different processes, then um, they're losing. And the if, if, if you're not adapting to the new regulatory environment, I mean, new regulations keep coming out. Um, you know, like 99 new sort of standards and regulations around cybersecurity. We just had a new executive order here in the U.S. by the, the Biden administration that are putting in a lot more requirements for industry as well as the, the public sector. And if, if you're not following those, you're not only going to get fines, but you're just you can't keep up with all of the the, the stuff and still do your regular business without outsourcing some of that in a efficient and effective mm. way. Yeah, uh, so just picking up on what you said there about the Colonial Pipeline um, ransomware attack, so that basically has put it right offline and it's then gone on to affect all of the fuel supplies for the rest of the nation. Um, so now we've seen US President Joe Biden then come and sign this executive order. Can you just elaborate for us a little bit about what that order actually will be and, and how you said about they might be open to receiving fines if they don't comply? How does that actually all work? Uh, so uh, the the simple version of this executive order is it goes to reporting um, and it's a good step to get the conversation going within Congress. But if it's only reporting and we've already had sort of regulations and and directives that say you need to report some of these breaches. Um, Though it's good, right, that we're starting to think more about these reporting measures and coming uh, at certain certain times of the day, it's still very reactive, right? So it's a reactive approach mm. to thinking about cybersecurity and complying with these standards now and, and also internally complying with the internal controls that that industry should be be putting forth. So um, I think it's a good step, a good first step to have the conversation, but it's still a little reactive rather than being proactive and going and getting ahead of the game and then educating the industry around the compliance requirements to keep the car running, 